Hey guys, welcome back. The History Guy here taking everyone's advice. I'm replaying Mansfield uh, as I go into the next series of battles. And uh, rather than skipping it all together, I'm uh, just going ahead with the uh, attack up through the woods. And that's going really, really well so far. Uh, I'm just about to the edge of the woods in time to meet his reinforcements, which I know will be coming. So I'll show you a few of the highlights and then we'll go ahead and get into the next battle in the series. I just got my reinforcements. There's about an hour and 57 to go. And I'm going to go ahead and start moving a little bit forward here. Just in time to meet his reinforcements as they come up at me. Alright, so here's the situation with an hour and eight minutes to go. I haven't even really engaged any of his reinforcements that he got. I'm just pushing these folks out of the woods down here and trying to get at his artillery as best I can, if I can. I'm going to try to push right through some of this infantry. And if they abandon the artillery, I'll push through to try to overrun them as well. But uh, thus far, much fewer casualties. We're uh, looking at uh, almost 4,000 for the Union and uh, not quite 4,000 for myself. And a lot of those actually came from the troops that are out here in the open. So we'll drive off these last few units. I'll be in good shape. All right, so we're pushing through here, and it's going to be a much different situation this time around. It looks like I'll be at about 7,500 casualties, and I probably could have been much more careful and caused that to be even more favorable to me, but both sides lost fewer men this time around, and we'll see what that looks like moving forward. At least this time I will have uh, made a net gain. My concern is what it does to his, because he will have also lost fewer men, so we're going to take a look and see what that's like this time around. Okay, so last time uh, he was at 97 to 102, so obviously he's got 9,000 more men now, and that's reflected by the, the fewer casualties that were inflicted on both sides. Uh, big difference, though, is that his training's actually weighed down, which I think is kind of interesting uh, as compared to where it was. So um, I guess we'll see what that means moving forward. As far as my army goes, I'm looking at uh, having about... Uh, 48,000 men available to me to go into Saunders Farm, Laurel Hill, and Cold Harbor. So, um, going to be interesting to see how this all goes down. Let's take a look at Saunders Farm real quick because I think that's where we're headed first. Alright, so what I've decided to do is go a little bit out of order here because Laurel Hill, I feel, uh, offers me a much better opportunity to destroy large parts of his army. Now this is going to be a challenge because uh, in my last campaign I actually fought this battle to a draw and he only outnumbered me by something like 30,000 men. This time around he's got me by 55,000. However, I feel like I can probably uh, inflict three or four to one casualties in this one. Um, so I don't know what that's going to mean. But we're going to give it a try. He's got almost 400 guns. Uh, so this is definitely going to be a challenge, as are every battle moving forward. So we'll see how this goes, and hopefully I can come out having really inflicted some serious damage on his army before we get into the next battle, uh, which will be uh, backwards. We're going to go to the wilderness after this. All right, so the opening phase of this battle is all about rushing to get to these fortifications before he can get to these fortifications and occupy them and you barely you just barely make it unfortunately is how this kind of works uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna try to cover the least amount of distance possible so I'm gonna shift these smaller units down just to make sure somebody's occupying the fortifications while I try to get the rest of my troops into position to support them and as long as I'm there hanging on and I can at least put some fire into him, that'll slow him down long enough to get the rest of these troops into position. And then I just got to try and hang on for dear life up here. 
until my reinforcements come. I've got about 18,000 men going up against his 61,000. And he's actually probably going to get more before I do. Here comes his first first assault wave. And I'm going to get into position just in time to hopefully repel it. And we'll get the Snakefoot Brigade up here to hopefully support that. And I'm going to take the 8th South Carolina down and hopefully try to use them as a small flanking force. And then we'll get these 10 pounders up here close enough to where they can hopefully do some damage. Here he comes. Same thing here. I'm going to break off some skirmishers. Try to get them down into his flank. And as long as I'm in the fortifications and he doesn't hit me with melee combat, I should be causing something like four or five to one casualties. It's when he rushes in 30,000 men on 3,000 that I'm going to have an issue, and he will do that at some point in this battle. try to get the Snakefoot Brigade out here. While he doesn't have his full force up yet, I want to take advantage. No, no, no. I want you to fire on these guys. Gotta watch airs up here. Oh, somebody's coming at me. Right here. This is where the problems begin when the melee assaults come in. And he just got more reinforcements. 75,000 to 17,000. Come on, Snakefoot Brigade. You gotta get some, get some fire into his flank. This is where the issues, this is where I get concerned. All he needs to do is drive off one of my units from their fortifications, and I have a problem. Let's see if I can merge these two units together. All right, we drove these guys off. Thanks in no small part, I'm sure, to Hampton Legion, Hampton's Legion's skirmishers getting into their flanks. No, no, no. Occupy the fortifications. I merged those units together. Alright, we drove back the first wave. And so far, so good. I've lost 500 men. He's lost just about 3,000. So about 6 to 1 right now. And I'm going to need that to continue the entire battle to have any chance at all. going to have to keep watching to see what he does and try to get into his flanks whenever I can. As long as I can drive off individual units as they attack, I keep him from massing large amounts of infantry because that's what I can't stop. If I'm firing from fortifications on two or even three brigades at a time, I can handle that. What I can't handle is when he masses eight or ten of them to my front and then rushes all of them so I can't let that happen and that's what he's, he's starting to to work on right here so let's come down 
Let me get him again. And when my reinforcements come, I'm going to have to rush them over mostly to this side. And I've got to watch supply, too. Make sure that everybody keeps supplied. Oh, my reinforcements are here. I don't even remember seeing that happen. Well, that's kind of a problem. I wonder how long they've been sitting there. All right, let's rush these guys down here. I'll send, well, I'll send one unit over here, but for the most part, they're going to come this way. Ayers is just sitting there, which is kind of funny to me. Uh, I'm going to have to pause a lot here just to kind of keep an eye on what's going on. So now he's about 3 to 1 on me. Uh, I've got, looks like about 800 I've lost. He's lost 5,000. So still about 6 to 1, which is perfect. I need that to happen throughout the entire battle, and that might give me a chance. these 10 pound parrots going. There we go, perfect. And then I'm just going to keep pulling Hampton's Legion skirmishers back whenever they're not engaged, just so he forgets they're there. And right, here comes another melee attack. A pretty heavy one at that. Come on, 10 pounders, pour it into them. I'm a little worried about O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws right now, even though they're performing admirably. Back Snakefoot Brigade back up into some cover. I'm going to bring, bring his skirmishers out and try to get even further around him if I can. Alright, I want to just take a look around again for a second. Alright, 51 minutes to go in the current uh, in the current phase here. And let's take I want to take a look just for a second at the uh, oh boy, I'm getting flanked over here. At the objectives to win. I've got to um, hold Harrison's Woods and Laurel Hill. Which is here. And here, so in theory, that shouldn't be hard. 
Now, in practice, that really kind of depends. Because I'm so heavily outnumbered. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, let's look at the numbers now. I'm routing another Union unit here. I've got to be careful here because these guys aren't in fortifications. Numbers now. I've taken out 9,000 of his men. The problem is I'm not touching his artillery. Uh, I've only lost 2,200. Man, a great day for the 3rd South Carolina. They are doing quite well. I'm going to come up here and try to get on these guys' flanks again. I may be wasting Hampton's Legion up there. Then again, he may be a deterrent to an attempted attack on that side. But he's, he's throwing everything he's got at my right. I'm going to send these skirmishers around and see if I can't maybe get into a little bit of trouble over there. And I'm going to send some more to join them. Alright. I just got driven out of those fortifications just in time for reinforcements to arrive. which we're going to have to rush all of into the same spot and hope for the best. Still heavily, heavily outnumbered. Paper collar brigades having a wow. I mean, just his numbers are just running up like crazy. My goodness. Perfect. No, no, hit him. So at the very least, I'm taking this battery out of action and distracting at least one more. All right, come on, guys. Get up there. I've got to drive him out of these fortifications. Oh, boy. Paper collar brigades routing. They have just been lit up. can't afford not to have the fortifications. Hold the guns back here for now. That whole side has broken. Let me pause for just a second and look at the numbers now. There's 12 minutes to go. I'm about to lose the objective on the right side. Uh, I have lost 4,500 men. He has lost 13,200. So he's closing that gap. He's starting to inflict some casualties on me. I've got to be careful here. only eight minutes to go but he's just about to take the objective and I don't know what happens after this phase these these reinforcements may be enough to turn the tide at least for the time being
Oh, no, 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 Ashmore. Don't run. Attack if it's practical. <laughs> no. No, it is not practical to attack. Well, now, of course, at least one must be fulfilled. I mean, all I need to do is do what I'm already doing, which is hold the two objectives. Uh, I don't need to also hold Alsup's fields, which if I remember correct, I think I used to need to do that, or at least I thought I did. But I only need one of the two. And hold on, because I've just got more reinforcements here. Okay. I'm going to put at least one more brigade over here just to make sure we hold this objective. But everybody else is going this way. All right, back off, Snake, Snakefoot Brigade. Let him come into Hannigan's uh, killing zone here. I've got to take these fortifications back if I can. All right, where's my supply? down there for some reason. Just I've got to get, got to get these fortifications back and held. I'm throwing everything I've got into this kind of maelstrom right in here. Now oh, here he comes again. Three more hours I've got to hang on. The numbers now are only... Uh, he's only got me by 36,000 men now. Um, yeah, he's lost 20,000. I've lost 9,000. That, that's not good enough. That's only like 2 to 1. That's because I've lost this fortification. And all these casualties are happen, happening right in here now. nice thing is these skirmisher units are taking the focus of a lot of his artillery. Come on guys, just drive these guys back. I'm bringing Hampton's Legion down. If I can drive Cutler off, I'm just about in position to be able to retake the fortification. He's just got so much firepower there. All right. Snakefoot Brigade's doing uh, an awesome job of holding the attention of these units over here. Especially the art artillery. There we go, there we go. Drive these guys off.
Oh, no, no, no. Back up, Ashmore. Behind the fortifications. Still two hours and 45 minutes to go. There we go. We're starting to drive them back now. Push them beyond that wall. Right, we got ammo issues up here and supplies are empty. Push forward. See it. One, two, three, four. Looks like, well, maybe three of his batteries are focused on Snakefoot Brigade, who's taking casualties, but um, they're relieving a lot of the pressure on the rest of these units. So he's now lost 26,000 men. I've lost 12. Not good enough. I wanted it to be better than that. But when you're outnumbered by 50,000 men, I guess you have to expect heavy casualties. Two and a half hours to go. I think things are starting to stabilize a little bit. Back up, Adams. I want to back the Snakefoot Brigade up so they don't keep suffering these massive casualties. Now I just gotta hope I don't run out of ammunition. It looks like I was keeping everybody pretty well supplied. I think we're gonna be all right. And it's just a matter of hanging on now. back these guys out get a bigger brigade in there do the same over here Concerned about Snakefoot Brigade. Their morale's been taking a hit. Every time they take a volley, their morale drops some more. I'm going to try to drop them back a little more, get them some more cover. Maybe I can send a brigade out to deal with them. Alright, I'm going to 
drop these guys out in favor of Eccles. And he's just kind of massing for another assault, but I hold the fortifications at this point, so I'm feeling pretty good. Alright, he's lost 31,000 men. I lost about 14. coming in trying to push me out of those fortifications. Just got to hang on for two more hours. And with every passing minute as I inflict more casualties on him, his ability to push me out gets uh, less and less. Now we're going to route the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 146 New York. Snakefoot Brigade. A lot of these brigades on the right have suffered horribly. Massive casualties on both sides. I'm just hoping that I, although, you know, I know, I, I know the drill here. I know that. The Union Army suffered massive, massive casualties in these frontal assaults in these battles in the spring of 1864, but they had the manpower to replace them. And that's what I fear is going to happen here as well. I'm going to inflict 40,000 casualties in this battle, and he's just going to get 50,000 new men. And I can't replace those losses, which is historical and matches the way things were. <laughs> Doesn't mean I like it. But I just... I have the, continue to have this ominous feeling that I'm going to get, if I even get that far, I'm going to get all the way up to the assault on Washington, D.C. and just not have the men to make it happen. Here we go again. I've lost uh, 14,300 men. He's lost 35,000. I think I'm out of supply. Well, just a just a little bit left. Let's go ahead and bring that down and help out these guys over here. Probably not going to work to my advantage. Just going to have to keep throwing off these assaults. Perfect. I got the Snakefoot Brigade just close enough 
to get some volleys into this artillery. So we've got some ammo issues now. Forty four minutes, forty three minutes left. And at this point, it's just about inflicting more and more casualties on the Union. Uh, I've lost almost sixteen thousand men, he's lost forty two thousand. It's amazing to me that he's charging in with this cavalry and just watching them just disappear. All right, here comes a, another advance. He looks like he's getting ready to throw everything he's got at me. We're just gonna let it keep fast forwarding because this thing's over. Wonder if it'll let this one keep going. He sent three three straight mounted units charging into that position. Two of them got dis, just dissolved off the field. And that's it. We're going to let this go. I'll definitely let this one go a little while longer. Of course, ammo begins to be a factor. But we'll let it go a little while longer. At this point, he's only got 16,000 more men than I do. And that number keeps closing. Keep doing it, Grant. Keep hurling your men at my position. Now, as more and more of my units get out of ammo, I'm going to have to consider wrapping this up. The gap's less than 15,000 now. Oh, slow down, Adams. Now the gap's just 11,000. Makes me wonder how long I can keep this going. All right, Snakefoot Brigade's got to get out of there. A lot of units out of ammo now. I can't believe he's allowing this to continue. Wow. 
Looks like he's actually routed a lot of his units from the field. That his max number of soldiers keeps going down. My goodness. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna milk this for all it's worth. Just makes me wish I had an unlimited ammo at this point. So he had f over 50,000 men more than me on the field when this started. It's down to just 4,000 now. Now the casualties won't necessarily be that many. But I'm almost at the position where I'm actually going to outnumber him. I think I'll probably stop it soon because uh, it's slowing down now mainly because of my lack of ammo. No, well, maybe not. Just more his units are shattering all the time. Alright. I'll drop out here and I'll let this go a little while longer and we can take a look when the end results come in. So I don't know what has happened uh, over the last couple of days, but I've noticed the game has been glitching on me some, and I've never really had that trouble. Uh, and it primarily happens on the loading screens and uh, occasionally at times in between. And unfortunately, what appears to have happened is when I jumped back in to record the end screen of the battle, um, it didn't show it. It didn't record it for some reason. So you're not able to see. But basically, it ended up that he lost about 49,000 infantry. Uh, I lost just under 19,000, something like 18,500 infantry. He lost about 3,000 cavalry and 12 guns. Uh, so basically it worked out to about um, about 3 to 1, the casualties for the battle. Uh, so he lost you know, something like 55,000 men, and he only replaced about 13,000 of them. So at this point, uh, his army size is down to 67 to 72,000. So uh, that's good news. Uh, the bad news is I'll still be facing a pretty significant sized force at Saunders Farm um, that, that'll certainly outnumber me. But that's where we are for now. Um, I've got one more career point. I'm going to put it into log logistics just because I've got all these huge battles coming um, with a need for a lot of infantry. Uh, I'll probably spend, really the only options they give me at this point are to put it into money and manpower. So uh, I'll probably do that, but I'll do that next time. Uh, we're going to we're gonna look real quick at what Saunders Farm looks like at this point. And uh, just kind of get a glimpse of what his numbers look like. Obviously they're going to change, uh, probably, as I start putting men into my own force. I'm hoping, because he's already probably near maximum, that he won't really scale up at all. So as of now, he looks like he's going to have about 65,000 men at Saunders Farm. Uh, that's with my current composition of my own force at something around 36,000 and a half men and 137 guns. Uh, obviously, I've got about 12,000 reinforcements. So best case scenario, even if I spend my reputation points, is I'm looking at somewhere just over 50,000 men to go up against his 65. Not undoable. Uh, as long as he doesn't scale up. But we'll find out next time whether that's the case or not. Uh, for now, as always, I welcome your input, your comments, your questions, your observations. What could I have done differently to make that last battle go better? Uh, please stay tuned for some other videos that I'll continue to be working on. But for now, please use that comment section below. Hit that thumbs up if you like this and you want to see more. And we'll see you next time with the Battle with the Wilderness.